Before I start this video, I just want to say sorry if you hear someone mow on their lawn. There's not much I can do about it, but I will try and get through the information as clearly and as direct as I possibly can to help you when it comes to this question. So have you ever struggled with building a deck, not really knowing what cards to be putting in and stuff, or maybe you want your deck to be that little bit stronger? In this video, I will be going over the top 10 cards, in my opinion, that most people should be putting in their decks if their deck allows it. Now, when it comes to this, I will be basing it just solely on the cards themselves. Some cards are gonna be very pricey. Some cards are gonna be super cheap. There's also gonna be cards that are gonna kind of work. They're gonna be counted as one, but there may be two or more cards. And what I mean by if it allows you is I am not basing it on any colors. So if you have a three color deck, but you see a card that's not in the colors of your three color deck, this is more for if you have multiple decks and your deck has the, this color in it, more than likely you should be putting this card in to make it a little bit stronger or better. But before I go any further, a word from our sponsors. The sponsor of this video is me. I have started an Etsy page where I'm going to try and be selling clothes that I've designed, thought would be funny, thought would be cool, thought would be amazing on people's bodies. So I literally spent maybe a month or two looking at different resources and stuff to come up with the nicest clothes I could possibly find with the coolest designs that I have done myself with stuff like play mats, hoodies, t-shirts. I'm going to try and do phone cases. They're harder than I thought, but I do think that it is a really good thing to actually put into. So if you would like to help me out or help the channel out, please go onto my Etsy. It will be linked down below and you'll be able to find very nice clothing and also be supporting the channel. So links down below. And also if there's any other designs, I will be putting on any of my social media. So please follow me there as well. Now that that's all, we'll be going over the top 10 cards pretty much based from the worst to the best in my opinion. So again, if you're interested in seeing what you should be putting in or higher recommended cards, it will be later on in the video, but please stay and watch from 10 onwards. Starting with number 10, we have Dramatic Reversal. For one and a blue, you get instant that is a common untap or non-land permanence you control. So what's amazing about this card is that it is a uncommon, which is very easy to get. There's multiple reprintings of it, as you can see. I'm not showing all of them, but I am showing a the two you can really get. But this card is one, very easy to get. For two mana, all your blue decks that you have this deck in, all your creatures have pseudo vigilance. But also if you're playing like something like a Simic deck with a lot of tapped abilities, this card is really good because you're able to do that tempt ability twice. So there's like elvish cards that are green that you tap for each elf you control. You have a Simic deck, you literally then play this, you get green mana for each elf you control, you then get an additional one. There's a lot of really good cards in blue and green with tapped abilities. There's also really good cards in blue and red and three colors and four colors and Wilberg with big powerful attacking creatures. This is really good for if you really want for two mana, you attack with your Cradle Hoof and a large army, or you attack with a large amount of dragons, depending on what your deck does, slivers, uh, Eldrazi, anything like that. Then you literally tap two and everything's back untapped. This is really good for literally blocking and attacking. But the better thing is, it is an instant. So it's one of those things you go all out, someone temporary's protections, it's their turn, they're back. You still have the ability on their combat to untap your creatures and then use them as blockers. So it's a, also a surprise block as well. Another amazing thing about this card is it also counts for not even creatures. You have a large amount of mana rocks, but still need mana for a big X spell. You tap everything, to get a large amount of mana, use two of that mana to then untap all your mana rocks and stuff to then do it all over again. This card is absolutely amazing for multiple reasons and it's only two mana and really easy to get your hands on. Number eight is a twofer, it is Swords of Plowshare and Path of Exile. Swords of Plowshare for a white, you get an instant that is an uncommon exile target creature, its control against life equal to its power. Path of Exile for one, it's an instant, that is an uncommon. Remove target creature from the game, its controller may search their library for a basic land card, then put it on the battlefield tapped, then shuffle his or her library. 
if you have white in your deck i recommend even having one of these depending on what your deck does one reason they're really good is that it is one mana to get rid of a creature and it's not even get rid of destroy is fine but with graveyard recursion being as big as it is it's not really the best thing but exiling stuff or removing it from the game is even better and for one mana in both of them is really really good now both of them come with a somewhat downside that it is one gives life and one gives a tapped basic land which again i always prefer the life than ramping them but that's just me plus with all of these being uncommon they're quite easy to get hold of plus the amount of reprintings of each of them and they pretty much come in every single commander deck for the last like 20 million years that has a white pip in it so when it comes to these cards, they're really easy to get, really, really powerful, probably the best removal in the game with barely any downsides. These cards are really, really amazing and belong in pretty much any deck that has a white pip in it. And now we're going on to the eighth card. This is for the black decks out there and it is Deadly Rollock. For three in a black, you get an instant that is a rare. If you control a commander, you may cast this spell without paying its mana cost exile target creature so again i know this is just after the two powerful exile white cards however i prefer this slightly better for multiple reasons yes four mana is quite expensive however you get to play it for free if you have your commander on the field but also it's not just that it is if you control a commander the amount of times i have seen someone play a blue black demir deck and someone take someone else's commander and then exile someone's other commander. This is absolutely hilarious because it just says control a commander. So the fact that it's a little bit bad when it comes to four mana to get rid of a creature and again, exile is better than destroy. However, majority of the times you are going to be playing this for free, especially if you have a deck that has a black pip in it that matters how like, especially with like descend is coming in as a bigger thing and the way that you're able to like copy instants and sorceries and stuff the fact that you're able to play your commander and then for free have a exile card that pops a really big annoying creature is absolutely unreal when it comes to match the gather plus the other good thing about it is it's technically got no downsides because someone's not getting basic land or health that's why i'm saying they're kind of equal because one is more mana and harder to play but the other one has benefits for the opponent so again they kind of mix and match number seven is cultivate for two and a green you get a sorcery that's a common search your library for up to two basic clan cards reveal those cards and put one onto the battlefield tat and the other into your hand then shuffle your library for three mana you get two basic lands which is really really good if you're playing a deck that lets you play extra lands you get to play both of these which is really really good However, there's also the fact that you get a bait for three mana, you get a basic land tapped, but also guarantee your next land drop. If you haven't played anything this turn and you tap three mana, you pretty much are guaranteed two basic lands on the field. Again, these are really good for landfall decks, but also even if you're not playing a landfall deck, the amount of times you're drawing all your creatures, artifacts and stuff like that, and that using three mana to be able to guarantee a land on your turn and also a land on your next turn is absolutely amazing especially if you have multiple decks you're then able to get two different lands and it's a really good mana fix now number six number six is solemn siliacrium or sad robot for four you get an artifact creature that is a rare when solemn siliacrium comes into play you may search your library for a basic land card and put it on the battlefield tapped if you do shuffle your library when soul and seal is put into your graveyard from play you may draw a card and it is a 2-2 this card is absolutely bonkers for so many different ways for four mana you are able to get three amazing abilities all built in one card one when it enters the battlefield or comes into play you get a basic land again mana fixing getting a land is really really good pretty much you're only then paying really three for this card which is kind of like playing for cultivate also if you're playing a deck with flicker and stuff you then get to flicker it and then get another basic land for free absolutely amazing second thing is you get a free blocker 
you want this thing to block, you want this thing to die. I've seen people in command and go, hey, I know it's your turn and you're attacking, will you do me a favor and I'll do you a favor. If you attack me and let me block with my sad robot, I'll then help you. It is a really good bargaining chip. And then thirdly, you get to draw a card when it dies. This card is absolutely amazing. I've actually seen once or twice, very rarely, people like play murder on their own sad robot to be able to draw a free card. It is such a good card, mainly because it can be in any single deck in Commander. It is a quite a good blocker unless the creature has trample. You then get a basic land, which again, if you're kind of stuck for a manner of color, you're then getting it for the next turn. And then you also get to draw a card. Again, absolutely amazing. And then there's even a free shuffle thrown in there if you do get a basic land. And now we're at the halfway point with number five, which is Cyclonic Rift. For one in a blue, you get an instant that is a rare. Cyclonic Rift. For one in a blue, you get an instant that is a rare. Return target non on permanent you don't control to its owner's hand. And it has overload for a six in blue. So when I say this, this card is not for two mana. If you are paying two mana, you are paying this card pretty much wrong unless in an emergency. If there is something that is really, really big and really, really powerful, you then paying the two however this card is for the seventh cost this card is quite expensive rather in mana cost and the cost of the card i think from the top of my head is like 45 quid but again it is so totally worth it this card is absolutely amazing because if you do pay that overload cost you pretty much pretty much borderline start the game restart the game for everyone else but yourself this card goes well in so many decks rather in simic and is it Again, anything with a blue pip, this card is absolutely bonkers for. Pretty much you can play it in two main different ways, offensive and defensive. What you do is if you're about to go all out on all your opponents and win the game, but you're like, hmm, they've got a bunch of blockers. I don't think I'll be able to win this turn. However, I'm going to tap the seven mana. None of you have blockers and are all wide open. Then because it is a instant, there is also the defensive if someone is playing a kind of growl big creatures big massive eldrazi and they're like i don't like you anymore i'm going to attack you with everything you then pay the seven mana to pretty much go no this is a semi what blue version of tefri's protection because i'm not taking any damage you're all out in me and everything's gone this card I've seen on multiple videos of people playing Magic the Gathering and I've also seen it a handful of times when I'm playing Magic myself of this card pretty much guarantees someone winning the game. So that's why I'm like this card is really good if you're playing blue. However, I know it is an expensive card so it shouldn't be in every blue deck. However, if you are putting money into a deck that has a blue pip in, I do recommend kind of splashing out and putting this one in. Talking about Tefri's Protection, that is number four. Tefri's Protection, for two and a white, you get an instant that is a rare. Until your next turn, your life total can't change and you have protection from everything. All permanents you control phase out. Exile Tefri's Protection. This instant has saved more people than I have ever seen than any other instant in my life. This card is absolutely amazing. You are pretty much untouchable your life can't change you have protection from everything and then also everything you own is gone you literally just pretty much just go i'm not here until my next turn all of you continue however the reason this is number four and not lower down on the list is because there is still ways to lose even if someone plays terrorist protection it doesn't protect your library so if someone goes hey mill everything in your library by playing mill half your cards and then having Bruvac, you still lose. It doesn't matter if you are faced out the game, you still lose. Your library's gone, face back in, you draw, you're out, you're gone. That's why this card is not perfect, it doesn't protect you from absolutely everything. There is still very slim and rare chances, especially if, I could be wrong here, if someone has a card that lets them instantly win the game, I'm not sure if that also counts if they're phased out. Let me know in the comments down below if that's how it works. And now we're on to the final three, and this one being one of my favorites. It is Fable Passage. It's a land that is a rare. Tap, sacrifice Fable Passage, search your library for a basic land card. Put it onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle your library. 
than if you control four or more lands on top of those lands. In my opinion, I think Fable Passage is the most underrated land when it comes to Magic the Gathering. It is so powerful that people don't kind of understand how powerful it is. Now, on the downside of that, it is quite expensive going somewhere between a fiver. Now, I see a lot of people put Command Tower in all their decks, and I was thinking of doing Command Tower until I seen Fable Passage. I think Fable Passage is better than Command Tower. However, Command Tower is like less than one quid, where Fable Passage is five times the amount, which again, is not a lot, but I can see people going, I would rather put in the land that's like 50 cents to a euro than putting in a land that is five quid. However, the five amazing things this land can do is one, fix the mana of any multicolor deck. If you are playing anything that's two colors up and you're looking for a land, bam, you play this, you get a land. Number two, it is a free shuffle. If you're not getting anything good, you play the Fable Passage, get your land, shuffle your deck, so you're more likely to get something better than you were previously getting. Number three, if this is your fourth land onwards, it is a free land. You literally play Fable Passage, tap it, crack it, and the good thing is, is you only need three other lands on the field because it counts itself. It gets the basic land and it enters tapped, and then it counts if there is four. So if you have three lands and you're playing a land for a turn and turn four you play Fable Passage, it gets the basic lands, then sees if there's four lands and then untaps it. A lot of people I've seen make the error of thinking it has to be four lands and the basic land they get, but no, it is the basic land itself counts. Number four is mainly for if you're playing graveyard recursion. Anything that lets you return a land bag or a permanent, this card is absolutely amazing for because you literally play it, crack it, put it back. You're constantly getting every single basic land in your library at some point if your deck, if you want your deck to build that way. It is so good. It is so good that if you're able to bring a permanent back from your graveyard, pretty much I'm gonna be like, get the Fable Passage majority of the time. And then number five, which is mainly because of the new mechanic Descend, you get a free Descend. You pay zero mana for a Fable Passage. If you have cards that Descended matters, you literally get a free Descend. You literally play the Fable Passage, tap it, it goes to the graveyard, and then you get a Descend trigger for every card that has Descend on it for absolutely free. And then you have no downside. You still get the basic land. And there's also that Descend card that enters lands untapped which is two mana i think so on turn three you're able to do that and still get the base clan fable passage is such a good card and comes in such amazing artwork i absolutely love the secret layer one that came out and now we're on to number two which again people need to be putting more board wipes into their decks a lot of people say that however i think if you have a white pip in your deck this board wipe is pretty much an essential this board wipe is one of the most powerful board wipes I've ever seen, and it is Farewell. For four and two white, you get a sorcery that is a rare. Choose one or more. Exile all artifacts, exile all creatures, exile all enchantments, or exile all graveyards. The reason I absolutely love this deck is it pretty much goes around whatever your deck is built around. Now, however, if someone has a similar deck, it does have its downside there. But if you're playing an enchantment matters deck, you literally just go, all your creatures, gone. People playing graveyard recursion and you're not, bam, all the graveyards gone. Artifacts, artifact creatures, if you're not playing any, boom, all gone. You're putting people back into the stone age if they are not playing the same deck as you. Plus you get to pick and choose. Now I know at some stages, if you have a large amount of creatures, but someone has more creatures, you are gonna have the downside of that. But overall, I think it's more, it's gonna work out more in your favor than more likely not. And even more than that, it's not destroyed. It is exiled. They are gone until the game is ended with very rare, similar, like very rare reasons why it wouldn't. And then number one, everyone knows that this was gonna be coming, but it is a twofer. It is Soul Ring and Mana Crypt. Soul Ring, for one, you get an artifact that is an uncommon. Tap, add two wastes. Mana Crypt, for zero, you get an artifact that is a mythic. At the beginning of your upkeep, flip a coin. If you lose the flip, Mana Crypt deals three damage to you. Tap add two to your mana pool. The reason both of these are in first place is that they are both amazing and both really good. However, I put them next to each other because they both have a downside. So I thought they would be technically, technically equal. When it comes to this, Sol Ring is 
really powerful. However, it costs one mana and makes two wastes. Again, that's completely fine. A lot of people still love the card and it is super cheap. So you can get your hands on this card with ease. It is probably one of the easiest cards to get your hand on in Magic the Gathering. But then there's Mana Crypt. Mana Crypt is a better version of Sol Ring in my opinion because it costs absolutely nothing. But the downside is, is that it does three damage, but again, it's worth it. However, the card is expensive, especially if you want one of the prettier versions of it, you're looking at a few hundred quid. So that's why I was thinking when I was making this list, Sol Ring's number one, Mana Crypt's number one. I'm gonna do Mana Crypt number one, Sol Ring number two, People may disagree with that. However, looking into it more, I was like, hmm, the price difference is huge, but Sol Ring is the kind of weaker version. So you're paying for what you get in both. So I decided to just put them both as number one. But now when it comes to my favorite part, when it comes to making these videos is, let me know in the comments down below if there's any cards you think are recommended to be putting in so many decks i've gotten i've asked a few of my friends and stuff they have recommended cards as well but overall these are the 10 cards i think should be long in pretty much any deck that is able for it if you do please make a top 10 list in the comments down below of your own ones when it comes to these i also prefer the different arts i love secret layer cards but talking about secret layer cards i have a video where i talk about how to get secret layers here I also have a playlist of other Magic the Gathering stuff here and a subscribe button here. And again, thank you for all the support. I would love to see your top 10 list and I'll see you all in the next video.